Hi, and welcome to your Candide preview. What is Candide? Well, very simply, Candide is a French novel written by Voltaire, the Enlightenment writer Voltaire, who we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but more particularly, Candide is a satire, uh, a satirical novel. Now, what is a satire? Um, Wikipedia actually gives a nice uh, definition of a satire. Uh, it says, in satire, vices, follies, abuses, and shortcomings are held up to ridicule, ideally with the intent of shaming individuals and society itself into improvement. And um, that holds pretty well for Candide. That's a good description of what Candide does. In particular, what does Candide take aim at? Now, one thing it takes aim at is just travelogues. What are travelogues? Travelogues are just, um, you know, the the um, memoirs of travel writers. Um, and these were very popular in the 18th century. Uh, Gulliver's Travels makes fun of them as well. Uh, but that's perhaps the least of the aims of this particular satire. More particularly, it's aimed at, you know, society in general. And you'll see that um, uh, Candide um, attacks or satirizes, makes fun of all elements of society from the very highest um, kings and queens to the very lowest kind of paupers, the church, everything. Um, everything gets satirized in Candide. Um, and philosophy is um, a main target of s Candide, and we'll talk more specifically about that uh, a couple slides from now. But beyond being uh, a novel, right, and a satire, Candide is also uh, a philosophical inquiry into the meaning of life. And uh, it's, it's a very, um, in some ways, a very silly novel, um, but as you'll see, it's got very serious themes beneath that, the comedy. And in the end, it asks some very deep questions about, um, if not why we are here, uh, then what we should do with ourselves now that we are here. Who is Voltaire? Voltaire is the pseudonym, the pen name, for Francois-Marie Arouet, an 18th century writer uh, who wrote in many genres, poem, poetry, plays, essays, novels. right? And he was known as an outspoken um, social critic with uh, with a very strong sense of humor. Um, he was widely read and he was controversial. Uh, one of the things that's um, interesting about Voltaire for us coming after Descartes and Milton is that now we are in the presence for the first time of a genuine religious skeptic. Some people um, characterized Voltaire as, as a deist, as somebody who believed in God but, but didn't um, strictly believe in conventional religion, believed perhaps that there was a, uh, a creator, but that he didn't get directly involved in his creation. Um, some people saw him as a, a full, full out religious skeptic or, or even atheist. Um, there is um, there's one reported comment that he made, uh, which may or may not be true, um, where he was supposed to have said, I want my attorney, my tailor, my servants, even my wife to believe in God, and I think then I shall be robbed and cuckolded less often. So in other words, he thought that um, religion might be necessary um, as a social institution, but he didn't actually believe, perhaps, in God. It was Voltaire's reputation, deserved or not, as an atheist and as a joker, that inspired what we might see as an anti-enlightenment poem by William Blake. Mock on, mock on, Voltaire, Rousseau. Mock on, mock on, tis all in vain. You throw sand against the wind, and the wind blows it back again. And every sand becomes a gem, reflected in the beam divine. Blown back, they blind the mocking eye, but still in Israel's paths they shine. The atoms of Democritus and Newton's particles of light are sands upon the Red Sea shore where Israel's tents do shine so bright. 
Blake, who was an early Romantic poet who had his own unconventional ideas about religion, took issue with Enlightenment philosophers and thinkers such as Voltaire and Rousseau and Newton, who he saw as questioning the existence of a spiritual world and of spiritual truths. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's get back to Voltaire. The subtitle of Voltaire's novel, Candide, is Optimism. Now, today, when we use the word optimism, we're thinking about a kind of a psychological predisposition towards a positive outlook on life. People who are optimistic are people who see the glass half full rather than half empty. Um, but the word had a, a, a slightly different meaning for, um, for Voltaire. For Voltaire, it didn't simply represent a positive outlook on life in a general sense, but it actually referred to um, a philosophical system that was very popular at the time that was being advanced by um, certain Enlightenment philosophers. With regard to the novel Candide, the most important proponent of the philosophical system known as optimism was Gottfried Leibniz. Now Leibniz, who like Descartes was both a mathematician and a philosopher, wrote several works expounding the ideas of optimism, most notably the Theodicy. It was in fact Leibniz who coined the term Theodicy in his 1710 work of that name. So actually when I used that term uh, a couple weeks ago to describe Paradise Lost, I was using it anachronistically. Um, that having been said, Paradise Lost is, is a Theodicy. Now in his Theodicy, Leibniz advanced the view that despite any appearances to the contrary, we live in the best of all possible worlds. That is to say, despite the fact that we have war and disease and poverty and crime, um, this world could not be any better than it is. Now, how is, how is it possible for him to make such a statement? Well, he uses uh, a simple kind of mathematical equation, the kind that, um, that Descartes might use for a similar proof. Right? Here's how it goes. It goes something like this. God is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. Right? But God is also beneficent. He is good. He is loving. He is merciful. Right? A beneficent, all-powerful God would not never create a substandard world. Right? He would create. Um, he he would create the best world that it was possible for him to create, uh, and therefore, this world that we live in must be the best of all possible worlds. Voltaire satirizes the philosophy of Leibniz most directly through the character Pangloss. Pangloss is a philosopher whose name essentially means interprets everything. And he often expresses ideas that come straight from Leibniz, ideas like if we could understand the order of the universe, we'd find that it exceeds the desires of the wisest of men. And there has to be a sufficient reason for anything to exist, for any event to occur. We'll see that when such sentiments are expressed by Pangloss, they're shown to be ludicrous cliches. As, for instance, when Pangloss is caught showing his sufficient reason to a servant girl. Another Enlightenment thinker whose work, or whose ideas at least, are satirized in Candide is the British poet Alexander Pope. Alexander Pope wrote a poem called The Essay on Man, where he essentially uh, tells his readers to stop whining and complaining about how difficult life is and, and what a tough world we live in. That if we rightly understood the world, if we were able to see the world the way God sees it, we'd know that whatever is, is right. Uh, look, for example, at um, this excerpt from Essay on Man, where this very famous phrase comes up. Cease then, nor order imperfection name. Our proper bliss depends on what we blame. What's he saying here? Stop complaining. Our happiness depends on, uh, on our not blaming um, uh, the order of the world. All nature is but art unknown to thee, all chance direction which thou canst not see, all discord harmony not understood, all partial evil universal good. In spite of pride, in erring reason's spite, one truth is clear, whatever is, is right. What is Pope saying here? He's saying here that even though our reason tells us that the world is a cruel and difficult place, the problem is not with the world, it's with our reason. Our reason is imperfect because we don't have the reason of God. 
we don't see that what looks like chaos is actually harmony. What looks like um, what looks like an evil is actually a good. That if we were able to see with God's eyes, we would see that whatever is, whatever exists, is right, should exist. Now, such a philosophy might seem attractive while you're reading a poem in the comfort of your home, but what about if you are subject to some of those uh, forces of chaos that that Alexander Pope says are actually for the greater good? A force of chaos, say, like an earthquake. One of the things that caught Voltaire's attention, and indeed the attention of the entire world, was the Lisbon earthquake uh, the, of 1755, an earthquake that hit Portugal. That earthquake uh, registered as a 9.0 magnitude, uh, which uh, was followed by tsunami waves and fires that killed roughly between 10,000 to 100,000 people. Now, it's hard to look at such an event and and um, and say to oneself that well it's the best of all possible worlds whatever is is right and it was in the wake of an event like the Lisbon earthquake which will appear in Candide that Voltaire's outrage was aroused against optimism so I think you're gonna find that Candide is a much easier work to um, encounter to read and enjoy than either Paradise Lost or Descartes discourse on method that having been said, um, it does pose some challenges of its own, and here are some very small tips for uh, increasing your comprehension and maybe even your enjoyment of Candide. And the first of these is simply not to come into it expecting a realistic novel. This is a satire, and uh, everything in it is uh, grossly exaggerated. Um, the uh, things happen that in the real world would be impossible. People are killed and then come back to life, and there are crazy coincidences, and people behave in ways that are very extreme, right? Um, so really, in order to enjoy Candide, you really need to embrace the absurd, right? And the other small tip I would offer to you is very simple. Read your introduction and use the endnotes in your book. In our edition that we're currently using, both the introduction and the endnotes are relatively brief, but they are useful in establishing a historical and um, philosophical context to the novel. And since it is a short novel, you should have time to have a look at those, uh, those tools in your text. So that having been said, uh, I wish you good luck on your journey with Candide. I hope you enjoy it. And um, that's it. We're done with our preview.